I'm very honored to be here and to witness this very insightful um, documentary all together with you. Insightful because um, we hear, of course, on a daily basis about the war, we read about it, but this film actually puts you in the middle of it. And um, this is actually what a city under sea, sea looks like in ordinary life. This is how it would be if we were under siege. So, yeah, for me it's uh, very insightful. And it also shows that um, this is actually what Free Press Unlimited stands for. We support journalists like Mantas to tell us the story, this story, the real life story, what is really going on. We support journalists all over the world as much as we can, in any way we can. This year alone we were able to support 2,000 journalists. In the Ukraine we were able to support almost 800 journalists with protection gear like ballistic vests and helmets, with living costs, with digital security issues, but also um, we were able to relocate journalists. But despite all our efforts and all our support, we were not able to prevent the killing of 43 journalists in Ukraine, of which Mantas was one of them. And Anna, my condolences for you. What all these journalists around the world have in common is courage. Because every day they go out risking their lives, risking threats, to give us the, the true story, the truth. And that's why they deserve our support. And that is why we, Free Press Unlimited, award two journalists every year with the Free Press Award. One for the newcomer of the year and one for the most resilient journalist. And I have the honor to uh, award the journalist and to give the prizes tonight. And I need to have a look at the jury report. Um, it's my pleasure to first announce the newcomer of the year. And the jury report states following. The journalist has shown that human interest stories can be impactful, especially in time of crisis. This journalist has quite a year starting with writing a story on abused migrants, domestic workers in Lebanon, which pressured the United Nations to secure them with flight back home. Back home. And after the war started in Ukraine, she did not hesitate, but went there and wrote about the reality of what she saw. Her article about equipment shortage in Lviv led to readers getting in touch with her, sending tens of thousands of pounds worth of equipment to the hospitals. And overall, the jury therefore welcomes journalists like her who create awareness on the human impact of conflict to remember that it is often the civilians who suffer the most, as we saw also in the in the movie, and to make sure that they are not reduced to numbers. Journalists like her give insight and make something that happens in another part of the world relatable and understandable to us. We hope that journalists like her will continue on this path and would like to support her by awarding her this award, the newcomer of the year, 2022. Please come forward, Antonia Candy.
um, a few books, but I'm going to have to ask about the hand receipt because I have to make a list. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then this is also part of the price. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's very kind. Thank you. Um, don't worry, I will keep this brief, but um, having not done it before, I thought it was best to make a few notes. Firstly, I just wanted to say thank you to Ruth and Murtha and everyone at Free Press Unlimited for putting on this evening. Uh, it's been an amazing event, and that screening was incredibly moving and incredibly inspiring. Um, and I'm sure the rest of the evening will continue to be so. So thank you for that. Um, I'm far less deserving of a Free Press Award than um, compared with who will next be announced. But nonetheless, um, I wanted to thank my boyfriend Fred and my family for supporting me in my decision to go and report in Ukraine um, and for also fielding kind of frantic calls <laughs> and WhatsApps at all hours uh, to help me cut the 100 words or tell me that I can pronounce corpse rather than army corps on the radio, which was embarrassing. <laughs> I'm particularly proud that I produced the work that won this award as a freelancer because freelancers face a number of financial and practical challenges that some avoid, correspondents do not. Um, so I'm proud of overcoming some of those. Uh, it can make reporting and getting access to comfort zones much more dangerous and difficult, and that's why the work of organisations like Free Press Unlimited is so important. On that note, I also just, did just want to thank the Rory Peck Trust, who funded me with a bursary for my hospital environment training, which was a useful introduction to some of those challenges. Um, and also to the colleagues who encouraged me to go despite the challenges ahead. Um, but more than anything, I am heavily indebted to the people of Ukraine and others in Poland who took me into their homes, helped me with translation, showed me their lives and their country, explained it to me, um, and trusted me to explain to others on their behalf what this war meant to them and how it's affected them. So thank you to them. Um, as the war in Ukraine continues, and we're about to see the start of the World Cup in Qatar and a climate conference closing in Egypt, I also just wanted to end on the note that as various governments and institutions cozy up to countries that have human rights and free, spe free speech records like this, uh, it's ever more important that journalists like us do our jobs um, and that organisations like Free Press Unlimited are supported. So thank you for sharing your support tonight. Thank you, Antonia. Then we move on to the Most Resilient Journalist Award. The award is presented to a journalist who has uh, demonstrated extraordinary strength of character, courage and perseverance in doing their job. They have shown a strong commitment to press freedom and independent information and are willing to risk their life of their freedom in order to keep the public, us, informed. This year is very special because the award will be presented to two people. One of them, a great filmmaker, who was drawn to document the impact of war on an everyday life. And with this goal in mind, he went to Mariupol for the first time in 2016 and then again in 2022, after the invasion. There, while filming his documentary, he was killed by Russian troops. But to make sure that his work was not lost, his fiancée went to find him and save the footage. She showed great resilience by carrying on her partner's legacy by finishing the documentary, which we all witness tonight. And this extraordinary life that was lost, an extraordinary effort made by you, Anna, deserves to be commemorated and awarded. Therefore, I'm very proud to announce that both you, Mantas, and Anna, you are the winners of the most resilient journalist of 2022.
I just want to thank you, all of you, all the audience. So, thank you, Orva. Thank you, Free Press Unlimited. Thank you, Stasis Baltakis. Thank you, Mila. Thank you to be with me. Thank you to be so supportive. And yeah, I'm glad that all of you uh, watch today this film, and that all of you now know that even even though my husband lost, but life is still going on.